Welcome back to Facebook Live. I'm Jill Malandrino for The Voice of America with NASDAQ's Facebook Live as we are interviewing U.S. and African business leaders for the Africa Investor Summit that's being held all day long at the market site. Joining me right now is Richard Biryugaba. Did I get that right? You did, close. Jill. Thank you close. so much. Thank <laughs> you. And you are the CEO of the National Social Security Fund in Uganda. You know, it's interesting for Voice of America, I cover African markets, and I think it's very exciting right now that we're talking about growth, moving away from aid to intercontinental trade, but to global, international, institutional investment on the continent. Uh, well, it's an exciting place to be in because uh, obviously all the mistakes that have been made have been made in the rest of the world and we are learning from that. Right. Uh, there is a huge development. We've got a huge population. Uh, so there's a lot of requirement for especially infrastructure. Uh, there is a lot of opportunity in energy. There is a lot of opportunity in uh, even roads, uh, dams and that sort of thing. But uh, certainly the population is, is, is a big factor because, um, you know, my own p pension scheme, 70% mm -hmm. um, of the members of the scheme are less than 30 years and all these people will be looking for things to be able to to do so uh, a huge opportunity for uh, pension schemes and uh, in global investors to actually come and invest in africa well that's the situation that we have in the u.s as well because we have such a larger younger population we have to figure out ways to invest yes. these social security schemes yes. how are you addressing that in uganda well some of the things we've done is obviously diversification um we uh, invest quite a lot uh, on the bond market uh, the bond market in Uganda has been uh, largely used to uh, raise uh, funding for uh, roads, um, uh, dams, as I mentioned, uh, uh, solar panels, uh, that sort of uh, new renewable energy. But also we've tried to invest in uh, small and medium-sized uh, companies, especially those which are listed on the stock exchange, which are uh, involved in a lot of things. Communication is a big thing. So mobile penetration is another one because um, uh, a lot of the of the new uh, communication, um, mobile money, and uh, all the new products that we've got um, are driving that. So quite a lot uh, trying to drive the economy. And then finally, of course, uh, real estate, uh, the alternative investments. Uh, we find that there is a lot of requirement for housing uh, for this young population and uh, putting together the infrastructure together with all the housing. So quite a lot of exciting opportunities. It's interesting that you talk about that we've already made the mistakes in the more developed world, and I think that's where you have an advantage with Africa growing out, whether it's agribusiness, green tech, even mobile banking, which yes. the continent is leading on because Ab you're starting from fresh. You don't Ab have to fix Absolutely. So we don't have an old infrastructure to get rid of. Mm -hmm. We've got all the fixed lines that never really worked, and uh, therefore we've leapfrogged the technology. Mm -hmm. And uh, th we're doing quite a lot of exciting things, or the, the companies are doing quite a lot of exciting things uh, which uh, give us an opportunity to invest. I believe that uh, Safaricom is one of the mm -hmm. of the biggest uh, 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 companies that we've been able to invest in and get very good returns. The share price has really been doing very well. Right. Well, the final question is, as a Western looking inside, transparency is yes. always a big issue yes. for African investment. Yes. How are you addressing that to attract that institutional yes. investment? That's a, that's a very big one. Obviously, uh, forming joint companies uh, with uh, some of the Western companies that uh, are able to take the risk in there, improving the governance structures, uh, uh, bringing in uh, procedures and, and policies, and then uh, getting people to, you know, to qualify and, and, and become professionals. Uh, so the CFA qualification. Uh, what helps in the code of ethics and that sort of thing. But obviously, it is still a work in progress. Okay, well, we're looking forward to seeing that progress turn into, turn into something great and attract that institutional investment. Thank you very much for joining us here today at the NASDAQ Market Site. Thank you so and much. And we will have more coming for you on Facebook Live. Stay tuned. I'm Jill Malandrina for The Voice of America. Doing business in Africa. You can't afford to be without Africa Investor.